Hey guys, it's what Bumpy TV. Guys, we're gonna be reacting to Here's Why the Bible is True, Jordan Peterson. Guys, Jordan Peterson is someone I actually have respect for because I feel he talks from like he talks from a place of knowledge, like research. Like he doesn't just come out and say things that he feels like most times, all the time guys have made research about it and he comes out and says it. So let's listen to this with open minded like anybody if you're atheist muslim christian like let us listen to this and see what he has to say the bible is true in a very strange way what you do as an educated person is sample that structure that constitutes the sum total of of the texts of our civilization If you mapped out the relationships between all the books that there are, you'd find that the most fundamental book is the biblical library. And I think that's even merely true historically. It's partly why the museum of the Bible was so interesting to me, because walking through it, you see how the books were, how the book aggregated itself across time and became fundamental. And the first book that was really widely available for purchasing, for printing, purchasing, and reading was the Bible, and all the books that we know about now, on the millions of books that we have, emerged from that base, that trunk, and they're all related to that. And it's certainly possible that without an understanding of that fundamental book, you can't understand all the other books. And maybe it's possible that without an understanding of that book, you can't understand other people. So, you know, to be people of the book means that we're all inhabited by the same book, or but it's probably more complicated than that. Like, it's not just the Bible, because there's lots of books. It's the biblical corpus, which is a library, and it's the relationship between all the texts in that book to one another. And then it's the whole structure of the relationship between all the texts that grew out of that. And you, you could imagine a map of that. And then you could imagine that what you do as an educated person is sample that. And so there's this structure that constitutes the sum total of, of the texts of our civilization. And then there's you as an agent that needs to understand that structure. But you can't read all the texts, obviously, because how much time do you have? Nowhere near enough time to do that. You have to sample it in a way, though, that gives you an understanding of the, let's say, of the gist of it, something like that. And so, and maybe the best way to do that in a fundamental sense is to become familiar with the biblical writings per se, and then to move on to other literary forms from that. And so, one of the ideas I've been wrestling with here, and, and you guys can think about what you think about this, you know, people of faith, Christian faith, say, believe that the Bible is true. But th that's never been that satisfying to me because I don't know what they mean. I don't know what people who make that claim mean when they say the Bible is true. It's like, well, what do you mean exactly? Is it true like, is it true like a videotape recording of what you did this morning is true? Now, if it's not the Bible, it might be some other corpus of texts, but it might be. It isn't. And if it was, well, is it going to be a corpus of texts that we share? Because if it isn't, then we can't share our perceptions and our values, and if we can't share those, then we fight. Those are the options, right? We either stabilize our hierarchies of value in some way that we agree upon mutually, or we fight. That's, or we're unbelievably chaotic and confused, and that'll just produce fighting in any case. And so, we have this structure of texts built from the bottom up. It's predicated on the biblical narratives, and the texts exist in relationship to those underlying narratives and derive a fair bit of their meaning from the meaning of the underlying narratives and, and vice versa. You know? And so then, the biblical is it possible that biblical truth is the sort of truth that is the precondition for truth? Right, because you think, well, it's religious people make the claim, people of the Bible make the claim, the Bible is true. The Bible is true in a very strange way. It's true in that it provides the basis for truth itself. And so it's like a meta-truth. Without it, there couldn't even be the possibility of truth. And so maybe that's the most true thing. The most true thing isn't some truth per se, it's 
that which provides the precondition for all judgments of truth. And it seems to me that I can't see any holes in that argument. And I can't see any holes in it from a scientific perspective either, because I think we do know well enough now as scientists that the problem of deriving ethical direction from the collection of facts is an intractable problem. There's too many facts. There's an infinite number of facts. They do not provide an unerring guide for action. They can't. There's too many of them. They have to be prioritized. And as soon as they are prioritized, well, then you're in the ethical domain. And then that begs the question, what's the valid ethical domain? And the postmodern answer is, well, there isn't one. It's all the expression of domination and power. And I, I think that's nonsense. I, I don't think that's a tenable solution. I think that we stumbled onto the proper answer in some sense in our religious enterprise, which is that we aim at what's highest or, or we don't. We aim at what's highest jointly or we're divided. We aim at what's highest and that gives meaning to all the things we do that are subordinate parts of that. We aim at what's highest and that's what collects us and gives us structure, all of that, you know, singly and jointly. And that's all what we've been trying to communicate all these centuries as we've been trying to communicate the whole religious corpus, generation after generation, and to sort this out and to straighten it out and to try to understand it. And uh, I think that's where we're at now, you know, maybe a little bit more conscious of what this all means and maybe a little bit more capable of being more certain as people of the book that the faith we have in the textual corpus that we inhabit is, we just haven't done better than that. And we strive to flesh it out, we strive to understand it, but fundamentally, it seems to be true in that fundamental sense that I just described, which is not merely true, but the precondition for truth itself. Right, this was amazing. Like, he said a lot, and if you think of it, you can understand, you can relate to it. And one thing about the Bible I've understood is that a lot of great writers actually talked about it. Like, I kind of read finance-related book and self-development, and I believe that most of what I've read has the Bible in it. And they tell you, if you don't believe in the Bible, or if you don't be religious, don't be bored. Like, take what is there because it has been from time like it's it's history and it's been there and it has worked for a lot of great people and it's still working for people and that's one thing i took from it right i know the bible is amazing i'm a christian myself i read the bible and sometimes i just read it and i feel this joy and happiness it's the feeling the bible gives but we should talk more than the feeling the contest and think that Islam believe that or Muslims they believe that the Bible is part true and not completely true in the sense that there are some contradiction in it and I honestly believe that some contradiction my friends have shown me like some of my friends and some of my online friends if I must say some contradiction they have shown me if I check some version of the Bible they have been or they are not they all have been corrected like when I check new reverse standards, like some contradiction I didn't see it there, but some contradiction are still in the King James Version, and I was shocked myself. But I was like, why will you be reading a book in such a contradiction? And most times is the year, like, let's say, eight year, five years and eight years, like, little things, but those things also matter, I won't be honest, because even to read a book, you're supposed to check out for it. But one thing I have a problem with is I feel people are carrying this narrative, especially Islam, Muslims, if I must say, that the Bible is not the word of God. Like, I believe it is. I believe it is. And I believe I will prove it. Like, I'll prove it in my channel. Like, I, I, really, I really don't believe that we humans can walk our way to heaven. Yes, we can try, but like, God isn't 
It's not because of our righteousness we are good. It's because of our righteousness per se, but it's not because... I feel heaven is a gift. You have to do some certain things to receive it. Receive the gift. But it's not because you are working and you feel, I deserve to be there. No. You just have to do the work and God will pick you if he wants to. Because it was written in the Bible that in the last days, people will say, I cast the one in your name. And Jesus will say, I knew you not. Because some people are just, I don't know, I don't know, giving yourself the glory and stuff like that. But that day is going to be scary. I, I have this books already. But guys, don't worry to come out with this video. Just like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.